Welcome to Mr. Biz Radio, biz talk for biz owners. If you're ready to stop faking the funk and take your business onward and upward, this show is for you. And now, here's Mr. Biz, Ken Wentworth. All right, welcome to another episode of Mr. Biz Radio with me, Mr. Biz, Ken Wentworth. Guys, this week we're going to talk about hot topic. Everyone's talking about it. Everyone's been talking about it for a while. We've done a couple of shows on it, but kind of scratched the surface for the most part on it. But we're going to talk about artificial intelligence today and specifically with business owners. And um, we are going to talk even more, you know, kind of skinning that topic topic down to talk about some things that you need to be doing to sort of future proof um, your business with some steps, a framework that you can follow in utilizing AI. And I've talked about this before. Again, we've done some shows about it. I know I, I think I even asked, maybe uh, did a recent Ask Mr. Biz show where we had a, a listener or viewer question come in about it. And look, you got to figure out how to put AI in your business if you're not already doing it. Otherwise, if you're not already behind, you're going to be behind for sure. I mean, it is not going away. Um, it's 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 only going to continue to be enhanced. It's only going to continue to be used. And frankly, with the ways that you can use it now and the continued expansion of those things and the way you can utilize it in your business, you're going to have to do it to be able to meet customer expectations as we go forward, because there's so many ways you can use it to enhance the customer experience, things like that. And I don't want to give too much of a way because I want to, I want to talk to Philip today. So our guest today is Mr. Philip Blackett. He's an author, consultant, and entrepreneur who previously has worked with FedEx, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, and Chick-fil-A. He got his master's of divinity degree from the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, his MBA from the Harvard Business School, and his bachelor's degree in majoring in political science and economics from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. That's a lot of traveling, Philip. Uh, welcome to Mr. Biz Radio. Thank you so much, Mr. Biz. Happy to be here with you. Yeah, looking forward to it. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of traveling there. Let's 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 get into that uh, with your education. Um, tell us a little bit about your 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 career and your entrepreneurial journey, if you would. Yeah. So for me, born and raised in Memphis, Tennessee, so Southern at heart, went to college in North Carolina, in Chapel Hill, um, basically under the guise that if I learn how politics and economics work, I know how a country works. And I, if you, I added business and investment to it, I know how the world works. So after college, that's what led me to go to New York City, worked at Goldman Sachs for a little bit in equity research, basically studying all the different types of industries, particularly 10 industries, everything from home builders, trash companies, staffing companies, railroads, air freight, just trying to figure out what separates the good companies to invest in from the bad. And that was a huge you know, learning lesson for me to learn about business and what are takeaways that you can apply to any industry. Um, so after that, um, I worked um, in FedEx um, in Memphis for a little bit basically shadowing and supporting um, their top marketing executives, um, including the one that's currently now serving as the CEO of FedEx now. Oh, wow. Uh, and so after that, basically got a great amount of experience, wanted to move up, learn the value of further education. And I was like, maybe it makes sense. These executives I'm supporting with the business school, I should do the same. So I went up to Boston and I studied business at Harvard. And then at that point, I was basically interested in buying and running my own small business, which I did a couple of years out uh, after business school that was focused on managing operating cemeteries, applying what I learned there. We went through the pandemic, the ups and downs there. Um, that's a whole nother lesson for a whole nother episode. Um, <laughs> but from there, you know, once I transitioned out of that business, Mr. Biz, um, I basically was like thinking to myself, OK, there's a lot to, that I've learned. Um, now going on, you know, 40 that later this year, at that point, you're kind of thinking to yourself, um, some people have mid year crisis at 40. I'm looking at it as like taking inventory of what I've learned up to the first 40 years and what I want to apply the next 40 years. And basically wanting to help small business owners and entrepreneurs really understand what this whole thing called AI is all about. And more importantly, how they can utilize it to grow their sales, outsmart the competition and build their dream businesses without breaking the bank. Interesting. So it sounds like, so you were doing probably a lot of heavy analytical stuff at Goldman, right? right. Sounds like, right? I can relate to that. So years and years ago, I was an investment analyst and I had my own sectors as well. And I, so I relate to all that. Um, 
But I'm, I'm curious, what, what led you to go, you know, from that, that side of things on into the marketing side? Is it just, you were trying to get yourself a little more well-rounded or you just, just the analytics was a little like, is it too, too much in the weeds for you or? Well, you do enough Excel spreadsheets around earnings season, Mr. Biz, um, <laughs> for about a hundred companies. Um, you either love Excel or you don't. And I think for me, it was the latter. It's just like, I, I can appreciate it. I'm not going to be an expert at it. I don't want to be an expert at it. So let me find where my like forte is. And for me, it's more so sales, marketing, and business development. You know, the things that add revenue to your business, your top line, because I believe that nothing truly happens in the business unless money has been exchanged for a product or service. So if we don't get that right, we're not going to be in business for long. Yeah, absolutely agree with that. Um, so, so I guess taking a step forward, um, going through those different things, and especially it's your experience with cemeteries and things like that, and going through living through the pandemic, um, what led you to AI? So, were you starting to delve into that a little bit, and you're like, man, there's really something here? Well, I think one of the big things I learned in Mr. Biz is that as you go through business uh, or just any career, um, those that are adaptable to new information, to new technology, to new opportunities. Those are the people that have long lasting careers. And that was something I learned where it's just like AI is that new technology that is this generation's social media or the typewriter or the automobile or electricity for that matter. Uh, like you said before, it's not going anywhere, but the problem is most people are acting as if it's a fad. And it's not worth like paying attention to. And one of the things I learned from the CEO of NVIDIA, uh, a publicly traded company that truly is in the weeds of AI and truly benefiting from it is, it's not AI that's going to take your job, he said. It's the person that knows AI who's going to take your job. And I think that can apply to business owners as well. It's not AI that's going to take your business. It's the business owner that knows AI that's going to eat your lunch. Yeah, for sure. You know, I've, I couldn't even tell you, Philip, how many people I've had that I've talked to about AI business owners. And I will admit a lot of them are maybe towards the end of their careers, but they think, I mean, literally I've had multiple people tell me it's like cryptocurrency. It's going to go away. I'm like, first of all, I don't think crypto is going away either, by the way. Um, there's bumps in the road with that, obviously, but AI has not had those bumps. I mean, not that there hasn't been some challenges here and there, but, and the other thing I find very interesting that you brought up is People think talking about, oh, it's going to take people's jobs. And it's like, do you do you know anything about history? You know, I, I actually cl can't claim credit for this, but I actually heard uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V say this. He said, tractors took people's jobs, took horses jobs, right? Way back when, when they inv invented tractors. Oh my gosh, the horses didn't strike. They're like, <laughs> you know, um, and, and so, and to your point though, the people who know how to drive tractors, now have jobs, right? No one had a drive tractor, right? There were no tractors before. So you have to learn how to do that. And to your point, with AI getting out in front of that, or at least jumping on the wave that's already, you know, sort of coming through. Um, I know even just my, the little bit that I've delved, in, delved into with my business. I mean, it is just absolutely amazing. Some of the things you can do and, you know, I'll be away from it for, I don't know, three or four weeks and I'll dive back in like, oh man, I could use AI for that. And I start, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can also do this and I can do that. And I can do this. It just like blows my mind. Guys, again, this week we're talking with Mr. Philip Blackett. Um, you can find out more on his website, uh, philipblackett.com or Dream Business Makeover. We'll put that in the, in the show notes as well. Facebook, X, LinkedIn, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, everywhere. You can find Philip. If you would like to reach hundreds of thousands of business owners every week, Mr. Biz Radio can help. Our show airs globally seven days a week for more than 25 hours across several internet radio stations plus 20 plus podcast platforms. Also, video exposure on the new exclusive Mr. Biz Network streaming channel, which gets blasted to 100 plus streaming platforms and the Mr. Biz YouTube channel and our 350,000 social media followers multiple times every week. Join Mr. Biz Nation as an advertiser by emailing us at info at MrBizSolutions.com. Attention, Mr. Biz Nation. We have an exclusive offer just for you. Get lifetime access to scarcity countdown timers and logic links for only $69. Yes, you heard it right, only $69. 
These tools will add urgency to your email campaigns and website pages, helping you increase conversions, sales, and capture more leads. Don't miss this incredible opportunity. Visit GetPulseTools.com now and take your business to new heights. Got a question for Mr. Biz you want answered on air? Email it to info at MrBizSolutions.com. Now, once again, here's Mr. Biz. All right, welcome back to the show. Um, so, Philip, I was thinking during the break here, um, I got to ask this, especially I, I kind of poked fun at you a little bit about your traveling around and everything. Um, but I'm sure with some of the, at least some of those jobs, if not most of them, you probably also traveled, uh, you know, for those jobs. With your travel background, I have to ask this question. Based on your travel, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live and why? Florida. Florida, I, okay. I, I would find some place in Florida, maybe Orlando or something like that. Um, here, here's why. Um, I've been in Boston for about 10 years, and I've endured spring, summer, fall, and winter in Boston for 10 years. <laughs> And so what I would say at this point, as I go into the second half of my life, so to speak, as far as 40s are concerned, um, I like to enjoy a place that's a little more tropical, um, a place that I have kids, they're seven years old, um, a place where I don't have to worry about what we're going to do for the summer, because what <laughs> we're probably doing on the weekends, other people are doing for summer vacation. Um, and yeah, I, I think for me is more of a business friendly state, I would say too, um, definitely is helpful for me as an entrepreneur. So I would say Florida. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I definitely enjoy Florida. I did a good bit of travel here over the last few years down there uh, for business and um, enjoy it. And again, business friendly state, as you said. My my big concern, Philip, I got to tell you, and I'm, I'm sure you've thought about this too, is man, especially since I've done so much travel and I've got you know a bunch of connections and colleagues down there. It's like, man, it's not if it's when you're going to get hit with one of those dang hurricanes. And so how do you, how do you, I mean, I guess every, every place had the good and bad, right? And so I guess that's the thing you got to be prepared for. But, uh, cause my wife and I've talked about, you know, maybe getting a place down there and things like that and retiring down there. So, um, yeah, I got to figure that part out though. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, it, you know, it's, it's funny. I grew up in Ohio. I've lived in Ohio my whole life. And, uh, to your point about, you know, the seasons and everything. Um, I had an opportunity to to, to change jobs and, and go out to Phoenix. And it was funny, the woman who was trying to get me to come out there, I said, oh, you know, this was a long time ago. And I'm like, oh, I like to change the seasons. As I get older, I'm liking to change the seasons less, or at least, at least some of the seasons. But anyway, um, she said, how many months out of the year is it too cold outside to do anything in Ohio? I'm like, oh, I don't know, maybe three or four months. I mean, you could do stuff outside, but, you know, you got to bundle up. She said, well, there's about three months out of the year that's too dang hot in Arizona or doing outside, but I'll take my other nine months over your other nine months, eight days a week. I'm like, okay, that's a good point. That's good marketing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of marketing, so tell us a little bit about, I know uh, next segment, I really want to dive into your future-proof framework for AI, but um, tell me a little bit about, and tell the, the listeners and viewers about uh, Dream Business Makeover. What's that look like? Um, how do you help folks? Yeah, so I think the big thing is you, you have to remember when you start out a business, you had a certain dream you wanted to fulfill and achieve. And you get started, you get the name, the entity right, and that sort. And you start building your business, and then life happens. And now all of a sudden you start getting fires you got to put out, literal or figuratively. Yeah. And at the same time, now you're getting pulled in all these different directions that sometimes, depending on how your business is situated, you lose sight on the goals and dreams you had when you first got started. And so what we try to do with Dream Business Makeovers is basically be that second set of eyes, that partner, if you will, that's sit, like sitting next to you and say, mm -hmm. hey, what were you trying to achieve when you first got started? And how can we essentially help you grow your sales? grow your profits, grow your exit value as far as if you plan on exiting at some point. Um, and even with the help of whether it's mergers and acquisitions, or in this case, artificial intelligence, we plot out a plan of where you are right now to where you're trying to go or grow into, I should say, um, and really help you achieve that. Because I think at that point, um, when you're achieving more of what you want, whether it's more money, uh, better relationships, more leisure time, 
more of an impact on your customers or your community um, or better time with your family and those you love, that's essentially part of what you've gotten the business for. In addition to being your own boss and calling your own shots and having your own schedule and that sort of thing. So it's really about trying to help make dreams come true for real, for real, when it comes to business. I love it. I love it. Well, I'm guessing based on your your expertise, uh, there's probably a big heavy slant on AI and how you can utilize AI to accomplish some of those goals and get back in that. I agree with what you said 100%, Philip. Um, there's so many business owners that I work with as well that have done the exact same thing that you outlined is you get so far into your business and all of a sudden it's like, we talked about this on a recent show, you're an operator. You're not really a business owner because you're so deep into it that you're, you know, like you said, you're chasing around, you're putting out fires constantly. I mean, is that typically the person that comes to you with, with your, with dream business makeover that it's someone who's like, Oh my gosh, I'm ready to pull my hair out. I got gray hair, like Mr. Biz here. Um, you know, or me. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, is it kind of helping people out of that sort of that, that hole? Yeah. I think part of it, Mr. Biz is thinking about from the sense that, you know, it helps not only just being a consultant, but being a business owner beforehand. You know, mm -hmm. for me, like I ran a seven figure business that managed and operated cemeteries. Um, there were good points, good months, and there were bad months. And oftentimes I was definitely the one that was trying to put out fires or get help doing so. Um, and essentially, oftentimes you lose sight of what, what's going on. Um, and it's helpful to have another set of eyes, which I did at the time too, um, to be able to figure out where do we go from here? And so I think for the the ideal person I love to help with, with regards to a business owner is saying, hey, you know, you're somebody that, that has goals for your business. You want to grow it beyond what you are currently. You're, you're friendly, you're coachable, you're open to new strategies and ways to get there. And quite frankly, you recognize that entrepreneurship can be a lonely job. And to have somebody that you feel that is trustworthy, that you can be vulnerable in front of to share on that ride together and figure out a way to get to where you're trying to go. Those are the type of people I want to work with. Yeah. Well, we've only got a little over a minute here, but I, I got to ask um, before I know, again, we're going to talk about the, uh, the framework you have for future proofing your business with AI. What's the number one thing you found so, so far, Philip, that's just the number one obstacle or hindrance that's in someone's way of someone you just described like the, that avatar? Yeah. The, the biggest thing, Mr. Biz, is that people have a mindset issue. And mm -hmm. it's basically the sense that with whether it's AI or any new technology, oftentimes we fear what we don't truly understand. And so whether it's AI today or social media years before, or as you talked about, even tractors, um, you right. get in front of some new thing that can help you become more productive and more profitable. It's about trying to figure it out. How, to, how does it work? How does it apply to me? But also you're dealing with some sort of culture shock where it's like, what I've been doing up to this point, now I got to give that up. What do I do now? How does that impact my team? How does it impact how I would go about things currently? So now there's a sense of uncertainty that you're not fully confident in. That's pretty daunting and pretty vulnerable. So helping people have the right mindset on how to approach it and use AI as an opportunity that can serve you rather than as a threat that can end you. Um, that's really the thing that we try to first and foremost to help business owners on. Yeah, I like that. And I think, uh, again, mindset's so important in so many different things in life, um, just not even just as a business owner. But um, real quick example I have, I saw the saying earlier, people tell me, oh my gosh, this is a fad, you know, like you had mentioned as well, Philip. And someone said, oh, have you ever heard of Blockbuster? I mean, it's Blockbuster. I go, no, I think it's Netflix. So you need to <laughs> you need to get on board with Netflix here because, uh, you know, it's not Blockbuster. Um, again, talking with Philip Blackett this week. We're going to come back after the break and we're going to find out how to future proof uh, his future proof framework for AI. How would you like to have direct access to Mr. Biz to help you run your business more profitably and more efficiently? At MrBizSolutions.com, you get live access to not only Mr. Biz, but also several of his hand-picked and trusted business experts, each with 20-plus years of experience to help you optimally manage and grow your business. That's just the start of where Mr. Biz Solutions begins. Learn more at MrBizSolutions.com. That's MrBizSolutions.com. Attention, Mr. Biz Nation. We have an exclusive offer just for you. 
Get lifetime access to scarcity countdown timers and logic links for only $69. Yes, you heard it right, only $69. These tools will add urgency to your email campaigns and website pages, helping you increase conversions, sales, and capture more leads. Don't miss this incredible opportunity. Visit GetPulseTools.com now and take your business to new heights. Check out all three of Mr. Biz's best-selling books at MrBizBooks.com. Now, once again, here's Mr. Biz. All right, welcome back to the show. And again, let me give out uh, some of Philip's info again here. Again, we'll put this stuff in the show notes, but um, you can find out more at dreambusinessmakeover.com or his personal website, uh, philipblackett.com. And he's all over social media, Facebook, X, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube channel, Instagram. He's even on the good old TikTok. Um, so <laughs> check that, check him out there. Uh, so Philip, I know with the last segment here, I want to make sure we really uh, dive into this a bit and give people a taste of your, your five-step future-proof framework with AI and how that can help and how business owners should start to think about how to utilize AI and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. So the first step we talked about a little bit before um, is one mindset in terms of looking at AI as an opportunity to serve you and not as a threat. Um, as we talked about before with the CEO of NVIDIA, it's not so much AI itself, it's the person that knows AI. So if you can become that person that knows AI, then you're more likely to use it as an opportunity to serve you and move your business forward rather than a threat to put you out of business. So once you're able to say, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm willing to learn AI. I want to adapt it and figure it out to include in my business. Step two, take an honest inventory of what your business does. You know, maybe there's some, some things, some jobs to be done that only you can do. And only you and your business can do better than anybody else. And you have to actually have a human, a specific human to do it. All right, great. Let's take that, put it to the side, right? Maybe that's 10%, 20%, maybe even 30% of what you do. Mm -hmm. Now that remaining amount that you might say, hey, I can delegate it to somebody else. I'm fine if it's as good as I can do it, maybe 80% as good, if not a little bit better. Um, but I need to get that stuff done and do it timely for me to move forward. That is the bucket of jobs to be done that you say, hey, you can outsource it to somebody else as far as an actual person, or you can outsource it to AI. And so you think about it from that standpoint and say, okay, now that I got this list of jobs to be done, move on to step three. Time to experiment. Research different AI tools that can take on certain jobs or functions that you do that can help take time back in your hands to do more of the things that are in your quote unquote sphere of genius. A good example would be maybe it's me trying to craft the right email to send to my newsletter of prospects, right? And it might take you maybe an hour each time to come up with the right email with the right things to say. Maybe you come across an AI tool that you basically send the right prompt to it to say, hey, here's what I essentially want to accomplish. Help me do X, Y, Z and accomplish it in this sort of fashion. And then in 30 seconds or less, you get that exact prompt, that exact email you can send. You can modify it to your own personality. Mm -hmm. But now you saved yourself 58 minutes. Right. Now, if you do that each day for five days a week, that's 58 minutes saved times five. Now, I'm not a math whiz. So I'm not going to be able to tell you that right <laughs> off the bat, how many minutes that equates to, but you can see the picture here and multiply that times another four weeks. And so now you got saved time. You can now put into something else. All right. So you do that for each one of those functions that can be delegated. Step four, continue to learn. Continue to invest in yourself and in your team to learn what AI is because you as the business owner, yes, you got to know AI to a certain degree, but what are you doing to empower your team in their different functions, sales, marketing, finance, operations, legal, to say, hey, what are the 80% of your jobs that you can use AI to work with you rather than work without it? And so if you do that, now you have not just one person in your business utilizing AI, but you now have your whole team. So just as much as you can accomplish more with 10 people doing the job, 
imagine how 10 people doing the job plus AI can do that job for you so you can hit more of what you're trying to reach. And then lastly, I would say is more so being more open to opportunities. Now that you're freeing up your time, you are increasing the productivity of your business where you can reach new audiences, reach new markets, maybe bring on new partnerships, new products or services. Think about where that lines up with your dream business, where you want it ideally to go. But you had the excuse originally up to this point of, I just don't have enough time. I wish I could hire more people. I just don't have enough budget. Well, now that we take that excuse out the window and include AI into this, what does that look like now? And really say, okay, what's the next step for you? And then move forward towards that and then continue this process going forward. Repeat the cycle until you ex keep expanding and growing to the business you always dreamed of with the benefit of AI. Yeah, I love it, Philip. And so, you know, one of the things I, I want to expand a little bit on one of the things, the first thing you talked about was, you know, the mindset and look at it as an opportunity. You know, for someone out there, and I know, I know you talk about this regularly, but I want to make sure I add it on to what you had already said is, if you're afraid, afraid of AI and, oh my gosh, it might replace part of my business or maybe it could replace all of your business, right? Then think about it the other way. Think about how you could make that an opportunity, just like Philip's talking about. And, okay, so I don't know, let's say you have a business, I'm trying to think of a business that AI, maybe you have a marketing agency and you're worried, oh my gosh, you know, five years from now, how many marketing agencies are going to be around? Are you going to run a marketing agency that normally would have 100 people and now you need 10 people or less, right? Well, how can you be that person? How can you be the person that runs that 10-person AI marketing agency utilizing AI to its utmost capability? Super important. Um, another thing I want to mention, and I know you, you're being very humble. You're not a math person, but you know, for those out there that say, oh my gosh, 58 minutes a day, okay, that sounds great or whatever. Think about it this way. Let's call it round numbers and call it an hour a day, five hours a week. That's 260 hours a year, 52 weeks, right? But say 250, um, that's over six weeks of 40 hour weeks of your time, just, just saving an hour a day. And that's, a, that's one of those things that the cumulative impact of this and I'm confident that the more that people delve into AI and as the capabilities continue to grow with it, an hour is going to be like nothing. I mean, as far as how much you can utilize it, it's going to be way more than that for a lot of different types of businesses. But I would venture to guess almost any business nowadays could get, gain at least an hour of efficiency a day. And again, that's one person. That's over six weeks of 40-hour weeks of one person's time. Think about it. You just freed someone up for a month and a half of other stuff they could be doing um, that may be more engaging for them. Maybe some of the things that AI is helping them with are sign of, kind of mind-numbing tasks that don't really want to do. And you could maybe they can you know farm that to AI, utilize AI for that, and now they can move on to bigger and better things. And I'm sure you've seen that a lot with with Dream Business Makeover. Absolutely. I mean, I think. Employee morale and employee retention is a key benefit from AI because, yeah, a lot of the grunt work or the work that people would wish they could delegate themselves to do elsewhere, um, that's a great way to say, hey, you know, we love to have more of your mind on things that are high level thinking, more critical thinking, more strategic. Um, but once again, you just didn't have the time because you had this other work that had to get done. But now if you can outsource that, not overseas, but to AI, and you can do that across 10 different employees, just imagine the time savings, the higher productivity, and I would argue to say the higher profitability as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and, and employee morale, like you'd mentioned, and employee satisfaction. And man, I would, you know, Philip, I work for you. I've always wanted to do X, Y, and Z, but I haven't had a time because we've always done this. Now I've freed up I can utilize AI and free up this much of my time. So now I can focus on this other thing that really gets my juices flowing. I really want to do um, love, love all these, the, the framework here. Uh, Philip, I really appreciate you coming on. Unfortunately, we're out of time here, but really appreciate you coming on the show. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure. Uh, love to come back here again. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for coming on, Philip. Guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Have a fantastic rest of your week. And don't forget, as always, cash flow is king. 
To become part of Mr. Biz Nation, follow him on all social media platforms or never miss a show by going to MrBizRadio.com. If you prefer free video content, visit the Mr. Biz YouTube channel or check out his streaming channel, which is available on 100 plus streaming platforms at MrBizNetwork.com.